Today on Locked On Canadians, the Habs player grades at the All-Star break. Locked On Canadians, your daily podcast on the Montreal Canadiens. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi there, everyone, and welcome to episode 777. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more, and you can start by visiting fanduel.com slash locked on. And as we said, that's our new sportsbook, great partner, and we thank them so much for sponsoring this episode. My name is Laura Sab, also known as The Active Stick, and I'm joined by Scott Matlove, Habs Eyes on the Prize. And Scott, today we're doing player grades. Normally you would do that mid-season, but we figured All-Star break is a great time to do this. They've played a little more than half the season. They haven't played, you know, it, it, it's it's a little past the 41 game mark. So I think today's today's a good day to do this, particularly since we're heading into the bye week. Yeah, and the thing is, is that uh, some in some cases here, things are obviously going to be a little bit different because there are call-ups that have played one game, seven games, five games, seven games, you know, not a lot. At, um, but there's been a lot of names on the roster thus far due to injuries and everything else. And uh, I guess the best place to start is the one spot that has had, I guess, the most consistency this year in terms of names. Uh, and that's in the goaltending. And Laura, do we want to talk about Jake Allen first or do we want to talk about Samuel Montembeau first? Let's do Jake Allen. I think because the thing is, like, when the season started, he was expected to be the number one goalie. And And I saw some questions about the way they're playing Samuel Montembeau, but we'll get into that in a second. Let's start with Jake Allen. I So on the year, 29 games played, 10, 17, and 2, 358 goals against, 891 save percentage. Jake Allen has seen a lot of shots. And played behind the Canadians playing at arguably their worst. He was in there for, I want to say he was in the nine goal game. Or I can't remember if that was Montembeau or not. But he's played in a lot of blowout games. He was in the one against the Sabres where he got left in for seven goals. I don't think he's as bad as his numbers look. But I think the Canadians were hoping for something more around like 905, 906 in terms of save percentage there. Allen's had a very bad habit of there's always a bad goal followed up by another bad goal. And then he kind of Zen modes it a little bit. And we saw that with Samuel Montembeau last year, where he'd give up a brutal goal on like the first shot he faced and then would be unbe- almost unbeatable for the rest of the game. And this year, Jake Allen feels a little bit like that. And admittedly, there's got to be some frustration for him. Yes. But with two goals, not one. And that's the key thing is that it's always two goals with Jake Allen. Yeah, like we saw in the Senators game, two bad goals. And then I know that they lost 5-4. The overtime winning goal, or not the overtime winning goal, the game winning goal went off at David Savard's foot. I don't really know what else you could really expect from him in that chance there. I think Jake Allen is someone who's desperately in need of rest here. He was before he got injured and put on IR. And I'm glad that he's back, and I'm glad he was able to play a few games before the All-Star break, because if he didn't, I'd be worried about him coming back and the old carry price kind of situation where, okay, he was off a while and then he's going to jump right back in and he's going to play five out of every six games. That's, that's not what Jake Allen should be doing this year, especially not with how well Samuel Montembeau has played uh, overall this year. And that's the thing. It's like, I feel like the Canadians are not particularly, it's not that they don't realize it. They're not idiots, but they're not particularly giving Samuel Montembeau the credit that he's due. It seems like they're still treating him like the backup. And I don't know what else he has to do to kind of prove that he belongs. Like we talked uh, in the, one of the mailbag uh, questions was about Samuel Montembeau and how good he was, but his rebound control is great. So I personally feel like I like his reflexes. I like his tracking. I just agree with the really, like, really poor rebounds. 
I also think that he's taken a huge step forward this year, and it could be because he he was injured last year, and this year, you know, he doesn't have that wrist injury to contend with. But it feels like a much better goaltender from the previous year to now. And so I'm so, so impressed with him. So I, I think for me, there are elite goaltenders in this league, and I don't know if I would give him the same grade as that. But I think that he's been a solid B. Do you think, no? Would you give him B plus? I think Jake Allen's been about a B minus Samuel Montembeau with the context of playing on this Canadians team has been an A this season compared to other goalies in the league. Obviously that changes, but with the team that has been around him and in front of him and sometimes going through him into the back of the net here, <laughs> Samuel Montembeau has been nothing short of fantastic. This series, a 909. And obviously that swings here and there, but if he finishes the season around a nine, 10, nine, 12, save percentage. This is a dude they claimed off of waivers, and we weren't sure if he was going to come back this year at all. He's solidified himself as the guy who should get a majority of the starts. They should still balance them, maybe one on, one off, two on, one off, whatever. But Samuel Montembeau this year has been a very big bright spot on a team that has a few very bright spots, but he's been the most consistent one here. And I'm really, it now makes the two year contract that he got look so much better because it get the Canadians now know we have him next year. I have no problem giving uh, Samuel Montembeau an A for this season. Jake Allen, I'm hoping with a little bit of rest and recuperation during the trade, uh, not the trade deadline, during the all star break, can kind of get back to form. And I don't need Jake Allen to be a 930 goaltender, I don't need Jake Allen to be a 920 goaltender. If Jake Allen can put in a 905, 910 on the season, I'm okay with that because it kind of gives them some balance going into next year. We're going to find out what Caden Primo is made of. We're going to see what's going on with a Jakob Dobish, what's going on with a Frederick D. Show, or if they draft somebody. But it feels very weird to think that, you know, I guess the hot take for this is that Samuel Montembeau should probably be the majority starter right now. But they still got to do a better job just balancing everything out here. Goaltending surprisingly been not great, but far from the biggest concern on the Canadians this season. And I think with goaltending, you have to grade on a curve, particularly on a bad team, right? There are some players, like we talked about, there's elite players in the league that are no question the best goaltenders playing right now. And then there's goaltenders that you have to grade on a curve based on how bad the defense in front of them is. And I think we can all agree that the Montreal Canadiens defense in terms of strategy, penalty killing, positioning, all of that stuff, they've got a lot of work to do. So I, I guess if you're grading on a curve, then I, I agree with you. I feel like I'm not I, like this is not the first time that I'm not charitable enough towards Samuel Montambo. Um, But I, 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 I see your point and I do think that it's OK to give him an A at this point, but we are going to move on to forwards and defensemen. And that's all coming up in just one moment. But first a reminder that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. And we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. And that is FanDuel. If you're new, that's even better because they've got so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. You can download Fan FanDuel now and you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. What does that mean? It means that you'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. And best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at fanduel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Scott, are you ready to move on to the forwards on this team? There are very many, so we got to be faster than we were with the goaltenders. Uh, yes, just because I think this one's a little easier to break out based on what we've seen from them this season. The good, the bad, and the... Local I was going to be mean. Injured. <laughs> yeah, the injury. I was about to be really mean and say the good, the bad, and the Dodonov, but that feels really mean, and I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna not make that my statement with this. 
Okay, so before people start yelling, we're going to grade the players. I know there's a lot of people on IR right now, so we're going to grade them on the games that they played. We're not going to penalize them for being injured. Do you want to go alphabetically, uh, Scott? Uh, whatever way you want to list them off, because the way I have them broken up right now is by points. So I will let okay. you... Uh... All right, let's do this. Josh Anderson. Josh Anderson gets... Um... As of late, more like a B, but for the season, like a C plus. Uh, he's not. He's scoring goals. Fourteen goals in forty nine games isn't terrible for him. But Canadian fans and Kent Hughes, I think, are hoping to see more out of him. He has looked a lot better as of late, but the early season start was not ideal for Josh Anderson. A uh, Yoel Armia. <sighs> it, it, it's, it's it's a, a D, D for me. It, it's a D. It's, <laughs> it's a D for me it's he what what can you say he's both cursed and injured and expensive it's like the world's <laughs> worst fiat like i don't you know uh cole caulfield a plus 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 i was gonna say uh he gets uh one plus for every inch of his height so it's still not a lot of pluses but it's a good amount of pluses still leads the team in goals um uh, would have hit 40 this season it sucks. Oh, that 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 feels like a stab in my heart. Uh, yeah. Kirby Doc. Kirby Doc gets an A for me. I love the evolution of Kirby Doc so far this season. He's an authoritative playmaker. He's showcasing skill, his physicality we talked about. It's not hard to see why Ken Hughes made this trade. And when they actually build the rest of this team up around him, I'm very excited to see what this next level holds for Kirby Doc. Yes, I would give him an A as well. Evgeny Dodonov. It, it's a D. It's I. There were no expectations for Evgeny Dodonov going into this season, but four goals, nine assists, thirteen points. He hasn't been terrible, but this is a guy who used to be money in the bank for like thirty-five to forty points easily. And I get that it's the Habs this year, but for a guy they were hoping to flip at the deadline, it hasn't been there at all. And He's again like Anderson looked better as of late. Could have used this earlier on in the season, unfortunately. Jonathan Drouin. <sighs> I'm gonna give him a D. I, I'm gonna give him like a C minus. Like, no matter what I do, people are gonna be mad one way or the other. Uh, as I've learned with Jonathan Drouin, there's no stable, there's no sane winning. conversation to have. I feel bad that he got hurt again just as he was starting to play good hockey. Story of his Canadian's career. C minus D plus whatever. Christian Dvorak. I would give him a solid C plus. Yeah, C C plus. He's got 20 points in 51 games, seven goals, 13 assists. I'm still not quite sure what Christian Dvorak is supposed to be on this Canadians team. Is he a defensive minute eater? Is he an offensive minutes guy? Is he what is he? They've never really figured that out, and I think that's kind of the problem is that he doesn't have a role. He just kind of bounces between everything and they hope it works out. And so far it's kind of a bunch of mid results across the board. Okay. So let's really quickly talk about Anthony Richard and you see Linden, cause they're not officially on the roster cause they got sent back down. Uh, both. I mean, Anthony Richard getting his first NHL goal, super fun, super cool. The Rockets all-star. He is absolutely lighting up the HL upon going back to he will be at the AHL All-Star Game in Laval this upcoming week. Uh, Jesse Olinen, hot start, cooled off a little bit. Still finding his way. Needs to learn to be a little bit more selfish with the puck. I'm not really going to establish a grade for either of these guys, but I think Jesse Olinen will be on the NHL roster after the trade deadline. One for the future. And Anthony Richard, I think, is going to be a fourth-line guy on this team next year. I think they're going to bring him back. He brings that energy and spice that they kind of like. Uh, both... If we're talking about the AHL standard, Jesse Olin has been a B plus. Anthony Richard's been an A plus across the board. Um, not hard to be excited about the future with Yolan uh, at least. Jake Evans. Oh, poor Jake. Uh, again, someone who is just starting to play really good hockey and then suffers a devastating injury in that middle six role. Jake Evans for me gets a B minus. I love okay. Jake Evans. Like hard to beat. Brendan Gallagher. I, I'm going to catch so much crap for this. I'm giving Brendan Gallagher a D. Started the season healthy, looked great, couldn't buy a goal, 
and then injuries and everything else. And he just hasn't looked the same. I don't know if he's going to play again this year. Uh, to be quite honest, it's a D for me right now. And he's trending towards getting Shea Weber basically because his body's just busted up beyond belief right now. Uh, Rafael Harvey Pinard. I know it's very, very, very small amount of games. So let's create him say, in the AHL. Uh, in recency bias, he gets an A plus in the NHL. In the AHL, he gets a solid A. He is the Arturi Lekkonen of the Laval Rocket. And I mean that in the most complimentary way possible. Not hard to love this guy. And there's a reason why he wasn't sent down today and Hart and uh, Yolanin and Belzeal were. So he's sticking, at least for the time being. Mike Hoffman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nine goals, nine assists, 18 points in 37 games. I'm going to give Mike Hoffman a C plus. He's frustrating, but he's far from the problem with this team. He's also been unlucky. He's playing just under a half point per game. He's a power play specialist on a power play that sucks. If they have figured this out, Mike Hoffman's probably got maybe double the points he has right now. Uh, I'm going to give Mike Hoffman a C plus B minus for the season. Sean Monahan. I'm going to give him a B. I'm going to give him a B plus before he got injured, which is unfortunate because I thought Sean Monahan was playing great hockey, really stabilized this Canadians team. And I am hopeful that the update we get from Kent Hughes this week is not devastating because it will really hurt my feelings because I've learned to really love what Sean Monahan brings to the table. I really like him. Uh, Michael Pazetta. Not good this year. No. Uh, not like, great. Not no. terrible, but not great. With Belzeal and Harvey Pinard, much better. Without them, kind of lost at C. So I'll give him a C minus D plus on the season. When they got the AHL line mates, everything got figured out. But the issue is they're not always going to be there. You're going to have to play with Armia and Druan again at some point. Rem Pitlick. Probably also a C minus. He he's he doesn't have the uh the magic that he had last year when he came over uh, on waivers, unfortunately. For the Rocket, A plus been fantastic. Okay, so this one I think we're really going to have to grade on a curve because I don't understand the way that they've played him. Uh, Uri Slavkovsky. I I don't even know. Like, flashes, but not quite. And a lot of that goes with how he was utilized. We think he wasn't utilized in the best of ways. I, I now look back at this and think maybe he should have been in the AHL for part of this and there shouldn't have been a problem with that. I'm just going to give him a C on the season. We knew there was going to be growing pains and work to be done. It's unfortunate that right now seems like he'd probably be getting a really good look alongside Nick Suzuki on that top line. And we're not going to get that this season. Nick Suzuki. A plus. A plus. <laughs> if you plus. disagree, he's struggling you're wrong. right now. And this is the thing, like, because he's struggling right now because he's playing injured and people think he looks like dog crap. And I'm like, no, it's because he's playing 700 minutes a game and he's playing way too much and he needs some rest. So hopefully he's going to get some rest. And even us, we put him on the down a couple of times this season and particularly in the last few weeks. But I'm still going to give him an A+. Plus, and you are not going to mess with uh, our Nick Suzuki, our um, large adult Leo son, Nick Suzuki. <laughs> um, and we're going to talk about the defensemen and we're going to grade them i don't know if we're going to do it on a curve or not but that's all coming up in literally just one moment but first this episode is brought to you by built bar and built bar is a delicious treat it is a protein bar that tastes just like a candy bar and if you haven't tried them they've got all these delicious flavors and there's some puffs flavors which are so 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 yummy and you can order them online and use our discount code. And you can also find them at Walmart. But if you go online and use the promo code LOCKEDON15, you'll get 15% off your order. That's LOCKEDON15 at built.com, and you'll get 15% off your next order. If you want to try and find them, you'll be able to see, you'll be able to find their most popular flavors at Walmart or Sam's Club. So something like cookies and cream, double chocolate, coconut puffs, that's the kind of thing that you would find at Walmart. And they are all extremely low in sugar. They're low in calorie, if that's something you care about. And they have a whopping 17 grams of protein in each one. And we love them. They're a treat. They're pick-me-up. So 
don't forget, if you don't want to go to Walmart, if you want to go online, it's build.com slash, uh, sorry, you use your promo code locked on 15 and get 15% off your order. Are we ready? I believe rank. so. Not rank. I was like, shall we rank? No, no, we're not ranking. We're grading. We're grading the Montreal yes. Canadiens defenseman. And um, I mean, it's not a whole lot of people out here, but let's let's go for it. Okay. So Justin Barron, I feel like we have to give him multiple grades this season. It's at the NHL level, he's been bad. He's been promising and everything in between. In the AHL, real slow start. And then was named to the all-star team because he had come into his own and been really strong in his performance. I don't think he's full-time NHL ready yet. I do understand why he is here with Joel Edmondson injured right now. Uh, admittedly, uh, he's already equaled Chris Weidman's production in 16 less games uh, without power play time. So I'm not opposed to giving him a decent grade, but I do think uh this year he should be back in the ahl unless they trade a bunch of these other defensemen at the trade deadline so this one's going to be a bit tough uh joel edmondson how do we feel about him <sighs> i i don't want to be mean but the way he played originally this season was not good he made a lot of baffling decisions with the puck a lot of missed coverages and a lot like Yol Armia and Jonathan Drouin, as the season went on it, before he had gotten injured, he was starting to play more positionally sound hockey and doing what the Canadians need him to do in terms of being a stable defenseman. It's just he hasn't really put that together fully. He's going to get a D on the season from me because you're, you're supposed to be helping mentor these young guys, and more often than not, you're leaving them out to dry and they can't cover for that. You're supposed to be the mentor there. You can't just throw them in the deep end and be like, ah, well, figure it out. I fully agree with you. It, it hurts my heart to give him a D, but I couldn't give him anything more than that. Um, so that one, that, one, that one was a rough one. Uh, Caden Gooley before he got injured. I'm going to give him an A-. minus. I can give him a B plus a minus pretty easily here. I think he was at that time when he got hurt, the Canadians best defenseman. I don't really think that would be too hot of a take. All things considered. Not at all. I'm, and we've talked about Laura, both of us, how wrong we were about Caden Gooley several times on this podcast. I really hope he can get back and play a few games before the season is over. Uh, assuming there are no setbacks but he he's really starting to show some promise here, especially as a really, really uh, young player on this team. And that's the thing with Caden Gooley. Like the thing that's preventing me from giving him like an A or an A plus is that even though he's NHL ready, I, and, and he's obviously, as you said, he was the Canadian's best defenseman. I still think that in order to be established as a number one D or like, you know, the mainstay defenseman on this team, there's still some steps I want to see him take. Like, and it's all about refinement. So I think, I think that's why I'm not giving him an A or an A plus, but for me, he's definitely an A minus just based on the leap that he made and the work that he did to get there. And obviously how good he looked in comparison to the rest of the defenseman on the ice. Um, the next person is Jordan Harris. Uh, I'm giving Jordan Harris an A, and I. Uh, that's, with Kate, that's, see, this is not a hot take, but people get really mad about this. I'm gonna I'm gonna be very frank about this with Caden Gooley out injured. Jordan Harris and his pairing with Jonathan Kovacevic is the best one the Canadians have. Jordan Harris does so many things so well that they seem normal, and that he comes off as boring. He does such a good job handling the puck, skating it out defensively. He has his flaws. He is still a rookie defenseman, but watching Jordan Harris play, he's been better than I anticipated this season. And he is right now, I know he's not playing the most on the Canadians defense. God bless you, David Savard. But I think he's been the Canadians best defenseman full body of work this season. I think the, the thing with him is the expectations. If you're expecting to expecting him to be something he's not, then obviously you're going to be one of the people in this market who don't like him and want him traded. I love Jordan Harrison. I think he deserves that A that you just gave him. The next person, uh, speaking of that pairing, is Jonathan Kovacevic. 
And I, I think he's, he deserves an A too. Like if, and again, you're grading on a curve. You're depending on the expectations of him. Like he's been so good. I give him a solid B. He is what he is. He's a five, six and at a stretch of fourth defenseman, not flashy, gets the puck out, makes smart plays, recovers well. He doesn't have the best skating in the world, but he does everything that the Canadians needed him to. He's a nice stabilizing presence that I'd like them to bring back next year and bring a stabilizing presence to the third pairing there. And you can have a Kovacevic and a Matthias Norlinder or a Kovacevic and keep Jordan Harris together or an Arbor Jack guy and a Kovacevic pairing when you have the veterans healthy again, depending on who's here. He's a solid B player, especially claiming him off of waivers was a really smart move by Kent Hughes. Really, really like what they've been able to do here. Mike Matheson. This one's up in the air. Uh, I haven't been wowed in the way that I hope I would have been. But at the same time, taking in the context of the Canadians, Mike Matheson's going to get a B from me. He's got eight points in 17 games. I'd really like to see him bring some life into the power play. And I think the biggest issue is I don't see it clicking right now. Uh, When he's fully up and running, I do think he'll surpass Jordan Harris as the Canadians best defenseman and likely will by the end of the season. But for right now, I want to see a little bit more consistency out of Matheson's game. I don't notice him in the defensive zone, which I guess is good. It's just I'm, I want to see more from him on the offensive side of the puck. I think we've seen from him what we saw in Pittsburgh. Like We want to see that here, and we want to see it consistently. So that's why I agree with your grade for him. All right, this one's going to be – I don't know if this is a hot take or not. David Savard. I'm going to give David Savard a C. And the reason for that is David Savard continues to be asked to play well above what his level actually is. One goal, 12 assists on the season. He's not what he once was. And he's being asked to do so much more than he really should on this Canadians team right now. I think he's fine in the if he were in a proper role, but he's being asked to do so much more that it just doesn't work out. The biggest thing is I'd really like him to stop starfishing on the ice. It is not 2010. You are not Hal Gill. Please stop it. It's not working. <laughs> All right. Chris Weidman. Chris Weidman gets an F. Chris Weidman's getting an F. It's okay. he he was supposed to be, you know, power play two. He produced decently well point wise last year. This year, he takes one penalty per game that he plays. He has 61 penalty minutes in 30 games. He is good for a penalty a game. The offensive production isn't there. He I it's He's I don't understand. I don't understand what he does. I don't understand what he brings to the team, unfortunately. He's struggling. And finally, we saved literally the favorite for last. Let's grade Arbor Jackye. I'm going to give Arbor Jackye a solid B+. Way I'm going to give him an A. He's way far ahead of where I thought he would be this season. There's obviously still some rounding out and work that needs to be done on his, like, not always taking penalties kind of thing. Offensively, he's great. Great skating. Uh, I that can easily be upgraded when we go to do these at the end of the year into an A, no problem. If he can rein in the, I don't want to call them reputation, but the unnecessary penalties, he's going to bump that level up here a little bit, I think. I'm going to give him an A. And I'm not pandering. I literally, I personally love him so much and I think he deserves an A because he's my favorite right now. <laughs> Um, and that's it for today's episode. We did the quote unquote midseason, the all star break grading. Uh, we have some mailbag questions for tomorrow, but please continue to send them. You can send them to us at lockedoncanadians at gmail.com. You can also leave them in the YouTube comments. Just write mailbag question at the beginning of your comments. So I count it as a mailbag question. You can send them to us on Twitter via DM at LO underscore Canadians, or you can also reply, like give us an at reply uh lo underscore canadians we will pin the uh the request for mailback questions on that twitter account you can also follow us uh, i'm at the active stick scott is at scott matla but most importantly please subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcast as well as on youtube and don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss anything from us uh when we either go live or post an episode thank you so much for listening the mailbag will be back tomorrow